My dear brothers, my sisters, friends, my fellow souls, all children of one God, Namaste. In all my Prabhachans, I always try to focus on leaving you with a simple takeaway message that if you were to do one of those little things we talk about, it will change your life. Today, I will talk about something that is the idea of our dear Panditji. He asked me to prepare this Prabhachan. The principle of isolation, insulation versus the principle of isolation. Beautiful subject. What does it mean? How is it relevant to all of us? So, so we know what insulation means. When we speak of insulating yourself, what do we mean? It means that you're insulating yourself from something. And when you're walking along the spiritual path, it means that you're insulating yourself in a way that you're not affected by the things of the world. It means that even though you live among those who do things you may not agree with, you can still live in the materialness of it all. You can still live with the personal associations. You can still interact with everyone be among the good and the not so good, be in the light and in the dark. But because you have learned how to insulate yourself from it all, you understand how to keep your own purity, your own peace. You keep your own peace of mind despite all the things that go on around you. We have so many references to the lotus flower in our Eastern philosophy and in the Bhagavad Gita, which still retains, even though it grows out of the mud, it retains its pure and tender beauty. It reaches above all that is dirty and unclean while still in the mud and surviving from the mud. So the Bhagavad Gita. Brahmani adhyaya karmani sangam tyaktva karotiya lipyate na sa pape pape na padma patram iva ambhasa. The person who performs his duty without attachment, the person who resigns and surrender the results of his actions unto that supreme being. That person is never affected or is unaffected by even those that is not good around him. Just as the Padmapatram, the lotus leaf remained untouched by it, that muddy water from which it grows. The person who does all work as an offering to God, abandoning all selfish attachment, the results, you know, the attachment to the things, the results of what he's doing, that person remains untouched by karmic reaction or sin. How beautifully put. So in this installation principle, the idea here is that we live in this materialistic world of pleasure and vices. Sometimes we find ourselves buried in this world of hate and dislike, the world of envy, ego, false pride. And we must sometimes involve ourselves in the emotional battlefield of life. But we can still insulate ourselves from it all and still keep our own inner peace and our own inner bliss. And when we do so, we, we, we find what we strive for, 
in this life. Bliss. Peaceful living. If, I, if you say you have peace of mind, you will say you're happy. That is what we strive to achieve. But you see here, nothing comes in its purest form. Look at a diamond. The color and hue in each diamond comes from different impurities within the diamond itself. To purify anything, that thing, whatever it is, must go through some form of refinement. Gold come in nature mixed with many other things, rock, soil, metals, other things. And to refine that gold, it must go through that process of refinement. Heat, burning, separating of the impurities from the gold. We must know that not all impurities are bad, but because they are not gold, they are not what you want to keep. You are seeking gold. Everything you see, all the items that go into building your homes, at some point in time, they all go through a kind of refinement until you are left with the material you are looking for. Everything. Everything around us, this Sam agree, this ghee, this wood, this material with which this kunda was made, all of that went through some form of refinement. If something is built with steel, the steel has impurities in it, the structure will, e will eventually fail. It is the same with each one of us. We come burdened with all kinds of impurities of mind. We come burdened with the fruits of our past karmas which must be burned off in this life of ours. What impurities? Impurities based on the results of past karmas, the family we're born in, the experiences we experience, the negative situations we find ourselves in, the negative people that come into our lives and we wonder why they come to create such commotion. The emotional challenges we face daily, sadness and misery which we must overcome. Deficiencies in our own personality which we must constantly work to resolve and grow past. Those kind of impurities which we must refine ourselves to eliminate those from our lives. Our spiritual journey of life. The habits and the addictions, addictions to alcohol, drugs, the habit of untruth, the addiction to lying, addictions to food, these kind of habits. These habits, and I won't go into that again, I've done so many times, we try to justify in so many different ways. But my fellow souls, just like gold, we too must go through this kind of refinement or else we too will fail. This is what the spiritual journey of life is all about. It is the refinement of self. This is what we're supposed to do when we are on the spiritual journey. Every day we should be looking into this mirror of introspection of mind. We should measure ourselves where we are in this journey. We should be our own judge. And only when we focus on separating that which is not good from that which is good, only when we consciously remove the not good from our lives, only when we go through this refinement, pro this refinement process, only then we will succeed in not being touched by the things of the world. This is that spiritual process of refinement. And when we engage in this refinement I speak of, we put ourselves in a mental state. We become like the lotus leaf and the lotus flower. That even though we grow and we live in society among those who may not be pure, we remain insulated. We are no longer, we are no longer become, we are not a part of that which is not good. This is how to purify ourselves. We must figure out how to stay insulated and pure. 
We must learn how to remain pure even though we are among the unpure. We must learn how to remain peaceful despite being on the unpeacefulness and the fighting around us. We learn to be loving and kind despite living among the hateful and the unkind. We learn, learn how to be compassionate, thoughtful, and truthful while dealing with those who are mean, cruel, and untruthful. We rise above it all and we maintain our own peace, our own calm, our own bliss. So even though the attachments that not, it might not be necessarily bad, but they will hinder our spiritual progress. And this is why we must detach ourselves from those kind of attachments in our lives. What does teachings of Vedas tell us about remaining pure? Yoga Yukta Vishuddha Atma Vijita Atma Jita Indriya Sarva Bhuta Atma Bhutatma Kurvan Api Nalipyate Again, Vedic teaching in shlokas of Bhagavad Gita, the essence of Vedas in Bhagavad Gita where Sri Krishna advises the person who works with devotion, who is engaged in devotional service, the person who is a pure soul and remain pure by controlling his senses and his mind. That person, everyone is dear to that person. That person cannot and will not hate and dislike. This person is a karma yogi. So in this principle of insulation, we learn how to maintain our own peace, even though we live among the unpeaceful. We learn how to help others who may be buried in their own misery of materialness, greed, jealousy, and hate, but we remain unaffected by it all. That is the principle of insulation. Now, the principle of isolation. What does this mean? It is somewhat different. The Bhagavad Gita tells us, Yada samharate cha ayam kurma angani eva sarva saha indriyani indriya artebhya tasya prajna pratishtita This shloka describes this principle of isolation. It says that when a person completely withdraws the senses from the things his senses gets attached to, the person who can completely disengage his senses from those material things, just as a tortoise withdraws its limbs into its shell. Can you visualize that? That's how we're supposed to disengage the senses to which the things, the senses are attached. And only when we can achieve this control of this mind, this state of mind where we can disengage, only then we will find inner peace, bliss, and calm. This is what this mantra from Isha tells us to live in a way that we do not get attached to the results of our actions. Only by performing selfless deeds should one aspire to live more than a hundred years? There is no other way but that. Let your thoughts, your actions, your emotions produce no attachment in you. May your actions not cling to you. Lip your day, cling, stuck. This is not the way to salvation. But you see, even our attachments, even our emotions, sometimes we get so fond of our emotions, we become attached to our emotions themselves. Then we cannot separate ourselves from those emotions even. We love someone, we are attached. We cannot live a moment without them. 
We hate someone or something, then that hate becomes like an addiction. We constantly think about that thing or person we hate. That too is an attachment. Why? And they will never bring peace of mind. Because attachment, and here's the beauty in this way of thinking. All attachment lead to two things which severely impacts our lives. Greed and anger. Bhagavad Gita. Dhyayata vishyan pumsaha sangateshu upachayate sangat sanjayate kamaha kamat krodha abhijayate one develops attachment to sense objects while thinking about the sense objects. Sri Krishna gives great insight into the function of the mind. He says that what we repeatedly think of and it become attached to those things. If we believe there is happiness in something, the mind gets attached to it. If someone noticed something, if a man noticed something about a woman, he thinks I'd be happy if she was mine. He constantly repeats this thought in his mind. His mind becomes attached to her. He cannot focus on anything else. She has now become an attachment to him. Most people think I love, what I love should become mine. A personal attachment happens. You go to the woods, you see a bird, a bird flying in the woods, you want to bring it home and put it in a cage. Putting a bird in a cage is not love. Freeing that bird is love. The feeling of attachment wants you to take away the freedom. Detachment wants you to give freedom. If someone is attached to his alcoholic drinks, his desire for drink is always in his mind. Someone attached to cigarettes, what do they think about? They want to smoke all the time. So attachment leads to desire. And when that desire develops, it gives, and this is what this teaching from this shloka is saying, it gives birth to two other problems, greed and anger. Greed comes from the fulfillment of desire. When you fulfill this desire, you want more of it. You become, you fill with greed. You want more and more and more. Anger comes when that fulfillment for this, that desire is prevented. When something stop you from getting your desire fulfilled, anger comes into your life. When we live this way, we will not get caught like, you know, a fly in a web. We would not get attached to the things of this world. Today, I don't want to keep too long, but my fellow souls, on behalf of my dear brother, and it goes around, I have brought you these two ideas. The principle of insulation, where you elevate your thinking so you're untouched by, by the materialness and the things of the world. And the principle of isolation, where you train your senses so you remain untouched and unsullied by the things of this world. And your mind remains in that meditative state of peace, love, bliss, and unity. Today I pray that each one of you understand and you practice this isolation principle which will lead you to the isolation principle. May you be blessed with this achievement in your spiritual journey of life. And once again, I really appreciate all of you being here today as we celebrate my elder brother, Panditji Gosaran, his birthday. We pay homage to him sitting here among us, which is how it should be done. Panditji, we all love you. And I hope that you see the love and when you and you can bless everyone when they come to you later on. I thank all of you for being so kind, patient, and attentive. Om Purna Madaha Purna Midam Purna Purna Mudachyate Purnasya Purna Madaya 
पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओम शांति 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 ओम विथ लव एंड ह्यूमिलिटी इन माई हार्ट नमस्ते टीच वन ऑफ यू Namaste and thank you Pandit Jag for your so special updesh today on behalf of Pandit ji as you heard it was all done in english and i know you you all understand what he is tra- trying to say so i'll skip the summary of his pravachan and i'll pay special homage to Pandit ji